Here in Ontario, Canada, lockdowns are lifting, which means stores are going to open again. But before you or I go racing off to spend our emergency government money, here are a few tips to avoid breaking the bank with film photography. Let's say you want to expand your shooting options. Maybe you've been eyeing a telephoto for portraits or wildlife. Well, forget buying a new lens. Instead, try and find a teleconverter. A teleconverter is basically a magnifying lens that is placed between the camera body and lens. This gadget doubles the focal length of your lens, giving you greater shooting options. It costs a fraction of a lens, it's lightweight, it's small, and it works with all your glass. Just make sure it has the same mount type. In my case, that would be M42. I have a 50mm f1.4 for portraits. It lets in a lot of light and it has really nice creamy shallow depth of field. With the teleconverter, this becomes a 100mm f1.4. If I wanted to buy a lens like that, it would cost me hundreds of dollars. That's why I take this thing everywhere. It doubles my range with half the hassle of carrying multiple lenses. Just remember, it is a magnifying glass, so you should be cleaning both ends. I have a video all about cleaning gear. I'll link that down below. Browse around for a light meter app. This measures light and converts it into camera settings for a proper exposure. Most cost a couple bucks instead of a $200 Siconic one. Some film stocks are universally loved because of how they capture color and light in extravagant ways. It makes them expensive though. If you want to try getting new looks or vibes, Try grabbing lens filters first, from full color washes, where it's essentially an entire color that blankets the whole frame, to polarizing filters, which help cut down reflections, and diffusion filters are just a couple examples. Filters have thread sizes just like lenses, so make sure those numbers match up and you're good to go. The best part about using filters instead of a unique film stock is you have infinite shooting potential instead of a fixed number of exposures. Film is an investment and you want a return on your investments, so do research on film stocks and see what they can offer. A good place to start is film types, I'll link it down below. Look at sample images, read reviews, learn where that film is at its best and where its limitations lie. But there's no one universal resource. Don't restrict yourself to only shooting the way everyone else does. Not every portrait needs to be shot on portrait. Whether you just bought a used camera or you own one already, definitely take it in to get a CLA service meaning clean, lubricate, and adjust. This is a standardized process that covers basic repair and cleanup for film cameras, like changing your car tires, bicycle chain, or hell, even just adjusting your glasses. <laughs> it keeps things working. Even more important than that, you'll learn what defects and quirks your camera has, if any, and how to work around those. For example, I learned that my Pentax Spotmatic does not like the cold. The mirror locks in place and I run a roll empty. Knowing that, I make sure to avoid shooting outdoors in the winter time at all so I don't damage my camera. And that's it. That was five budget film photography tips for you. Thanks for watching everybody. If you left this video in a good mood, leave a like down below. Subscribe for more of this, I guess. And until next time, a lot of videos.